So the UK is home of, of so many media-related inventions. It's interesting that you invented photography, you invented television, you invented computers both in concept and in practice. It's not widely known, but the world's first office computer was built in 1951 by Lyons Chain of Tea Shops. Interesting. Yet nobody, none of the le world's leading players in these fields are from the UK. That's a problem. How can you avoid the same fate for your television innovations? And there's no, uh, this one is a hard question. It res re um, requires a lot of serious discussion. There is no simple fix, but I have some suggestions. And again, with apologies, I'll bring them forward. I think you need to bring art and science back together. Think back to the glory days of the Victorian era, which I've so, so much studied on television growing up. It was a time when the same people who wrote poetry also built bridges. Lewis Carroll didn't just write one of the classic fairy tales of all time. He was also a mathematics tutor at Oxford. Hmm, but you didn't know that. James Clerk Maxwell was described by Einstein as one of the best physicists since Newton, and that's without doubt, but he was also a published poet. But over the last century, the, the UK has stopped nurturing its polymaths, I would argue. There's been a drift to the humanities. Engineering and science are not as championed. Even worse, both sides seem to denigrate the other. To use what I'm told by my uh, British friends is the local vernacular, you're either a lovey or a buffin. Not good, not good. Sorry, I hope I didn't offend one group or the other. <laughs> the loveys and the buffins. To change that, you need to start at the beginning with education. We need to reignite children's passion for science, engineering, and mathematics. In the 1980s, another interesting thing about the BBC, they not only broadcast programming for kids about coding, programming, but in partnership with ACORN, remember them? Shipped over a million BBC microcomputers into schools and homes. That was a fabulous initiative, and it's now gone. And I was actually flabbergasted. I've been working on this question of in my new role, I've been working on, on this question about math and science education globally, how do Western world compete with Asia, all those sorts of questions that are on everybody's mind. I was flabbergasted to learn that today computer science is not even taught as standard in UK schools. Now your IT cur curriculum, by the way, focuses on teaching how to use software, but it doesn't teach people how it's made. This risks throwing away your great computing heritage. And at college level, too, the UK needs to provide more encouragement and opportunity for people to study science and engineering. In the United States, President Obama announced a program to train 10,000 more engineers a year. So there's an example of somebody sticking his neck out, and I think in the obviously correct way. I, I, I saw on the other day on The Apprentice that Alan Sugar said engineers are no good for business. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, shall we check a few facts here? <laughs> really? Well, I don't think we've done so badly. So, if the U sorry, I just couldn't, I just couldn't resist, you know. <laughs> um, if the UK's creative in in industries want to thrive in, in our joint digital future, you need people who understand all facets of it integrated in from your very beginning. Take the lead from the Victorians and ignore Lord Sugar. Bring engineers into your, in, into your company at every level, occasionally including into the top. Now second, okay, so that was sort of complaint number one. Sorry to be blunt, but might as well. Number two, you need to get better at growing big companies. The UK, and this is very, very well established. Uh, it's an issue that your government has identified and many people have talked about it does a great job at backing small terms and cottage industries. You are the, I think, the world leader at it. But there's little point in getting a thousand seeds to sprout if they've left to wither or they get transplanted, sorry for the metaphor, overseas. UK businesses need championing to help them grow into global powerhouses without having to sell out. I mean, they're literally forced to sell out to foreign-owned companies, including Google, I might add. Now, if you don't address this, then the UK will continue to be where inventions are born. 
and not bred for long-term success. Thank you for your innovation. Thank you for your brilliant ideas. You're not fully taking advantage of them on a global stage. And I, I would say that you have to figure out a way to get smarter about the divide between the public and the commercial sectors to get the most out of your public sector innovations. You know, I talked earlier about the iPlayer. It's a great product. Wouldn't it be better if the iPlayer were extended to more channels? In fact, there was a, a project called Project Kangaroo to do this, which looked great. But despite s several valiant attempts, clever lobbying resulted in the regulators blocking it, seemingly on the basis that it would be too successful. Okay. <laughs> so much for you. Right? I mean, it doesn't make sense. So, so why don't we start from the principle of we're going to have really successful products, right? Now, there is a product that's coming, coming along that has, um, it goes by the name UView, which looks pretty good to me. But even if UView meets its revised timetable of 2012, you'll still have thrown away several years where the UK could have been in the lead. And that's a lifetime. It's a complete lifetime in my world. 